8.2, number 8 and 10. Here we're going to continue using the same properties from the previous video, but we're going to do trickier problems now. So number 8, we want to multiply and simplify root 10 times root 35. So I don't really see a perfect root here that would let me simplify this, and root 35 is just 5 times 7. I don't see a perfect root here either. So I'm going to go ahead and put them under one radical and see if that helps. Now under one radical, let's factor what we have here. We have 10, which is 2 times 5, and 35, which is 5 times 7. And then what I notice is that I have a 5 times a 5 here. I'm going to rewrite this as 25, which is a perfect square, so I'm going to be able to take the square root of it. So let's keep going over here. So now I can rewrite that as 2 times 25 times 7, and there's a perfect square, so I'm going to do the square root of the 25. Now I could either write them as all separate things, or knowing that I could take the square root of it separately, I'm just going to pull it outside and do root, oops, root 25 equals 5. So I pull outside of the root the 5, because I took the square root of 25, and I'm left with the root 2 times 7. So my final answer will be 5 root 14. And here we have another similar one. Multiply and simplify. 14 is 2 times 7, so nothing nice there. 10 is 2 times 5. Nothing nice there, so I'm going to go ahead and put them under one radical. And I will go ahead and do 5 times 2 and just bring that to the outside. So 5 times 2 gives a 10, root 14 times 10 under 1 radical. And now we want to factor them and see if we can create a perfect square. And that way we can take a square root. 10 times 14 is 7 times 2, 10 is 2 times 5. Yep, I've got 2 times 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and rewrite that as a 4. And then take out, because root 4 is going to be equal to 2. Now once we pull it outside, we're doing the root, and that means we're going to end up with a 2. So we have, continuing up here, we have the original 10 that we started with, then we do the root 4, which gives us a 2, and the leftovers are 7 times 5. That gives us 20, root 35, as our final answer. And you can also do an intermediate step here, if you don't like this way of kind of pulling it out and taking the root automatically like that. Let's say, or... From there, you could say 10 times root 4, give it its own root, and then just keep the 7 times 5 in their own radical also, because there's no reason to split them up, because we can't do a, a square root of them anyways. Then that would give us 10 times 2 times root 35, or 20 root 35. All right, and if you have a real strong preference for one of those methods, let me know because it always helps me to know what students prefer to see and what helps them to understand. And let's do, let's see, one more problem. Let's use the division property now with the same kind of question where we're trying to simplify. Simplify root 2 over 3 times root 8 over 27. Well, this would be kind of a mess to try to simplify, you know, just the 27 or just the 8. So let's go ahead and just combine everything and see what we've got going here. So let's do root 2 times 8 over 3 times 27. And I don't see any nice canceling that happens. So if there was some nice canceling, I would leave them under one root. But I don't see anything nice happening, so let's go ahead and split them up. So root 
2 times 8 over root 3 times 27. And then we can go ahead and say, let's see, root 2 times 8 is the same as root 16. Well, that's nice because that's a perfect um, square. So we're going to be able to take that root. And then 3 times 27 is 81. Okay, that worked out nice too. So now we can do root 16 is 4, root 81 is 9. And that would be our final answer.